Uh, Sharon. Hello. How are you? I think we're all right. Good. Yeah, you too. So you're here at 2000 Trees. How was your set earlier today? Oh, it was class. It was, it was great. Amazing. There were so many people there. It was like, wait. <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> it was great though. It was a great atmosphere. The crowd was amazing. Uh, the set was just brilliant. Yeah. Like it felt amazing. Yeah, good. Uh, good. And uh, hopefully you played some Hey Tori. We did. Oh, on yeah. the stage. Tell, tell us a bit about that. So that was sort of like uh Oh, hello. Uh, that was sort of like... Uh, I'll be able to hear you otherwise. Oh, right, okay. Well, that was um, that was a record that we created over lockdown. Um, we we were really lucky. Like, people, like a lot of people are saying, you know, lockdown was, like, really tough and stuff, and they found it really difficult to write, but we all live within, like, 10 minutes of each other, so really that was, like, also in our prime time. Like, we were, we were just, like, you know, whenever it was safe to do, so we were right, meeting up and, like, just writing like class songs and then we were lucky enough then to get over to Veda Studios then in um, the October 2020 just as soon as like the lockdown was lifted for a few weeks and then we went back into lockdown when we were over there so um, yeah it was just crazy but like we um, a lot of the song like the songs on it are all different like I suppose like it's all just kind of what we were what we were doing and where our heads were at at the time like over lockdown Um, and yeah like I mean there's songs on it about like listening my heads about like a fucking Netflix documentary that I was watching at the time, Dirty John, where like this like girl called Betty Broderick like murders her husband and I don't know, I just like he was a duckhead anyway, I don't know. Like I just I felt I resonated with that, but yeah, we we had a good time. Good. And what was it like writing and recording a record in such different circumstances because of the pandemic? You know, I think it was actually better because we had no shows to worry about. So before lockdown, we were doing shows like once a week, twice a week, traveling all over Ireland. Like we had plans to go to the UK. And then whenever lockdown happened, it was like, oh, this is what it's like not to tour. So we had the writing uh, kind of the writing period of like five months um, and we just put it all together and it was great to actually do something where we didn't have to worry about the outside world everything was just about the EP and everything was about Hey Tori and that was like our sole focus so it was great to actually be able to do that just without any other distractions that got in the way <laughs> yeah for sure now you'll be people will be wanting to see you live and, and touring you've obviously played here today but where can people see you kind of in the in the coming weeks and months I don't know uh, <laughs> Maybe we can all answer this one. <laughs> When's the next thing? We're actually kind of slowing down now because we do want to go into hibernation again to start writing maybe the next thing mm-hmm. to come out. Uh, we just want to get the heads down and make sure that we do what we did with Hey Tori and you know, take a wee bit of us and put it out there for everybody yeah, else yeah. to hear because like at the, uh, at you were saying, like it's, they were all so different. All the songs were so different. There's one about Netflix. There's one about... Uh, uh, being partners like an LGBT um, relationship and then domestic uh, domestic abuse as well and it's just we buy everything and w- I hope that we get to do that again yeah. where we get the barrel and see what the crowd thinks yeah absolutely and obviously ho- hopefully heading back into the studio soon how much of this new record is done is it just kind of discussions Ooh, going on we can't got tell you anything about that just yet no <laughs> um we are like if people do want to see us like we're, there's talk of us maybe doing um some stuff in the uk in april next year um but that is just like obviously depending on how this new project goes and ooh, all very exciting stuff but yeah 2000 trees and then we are just flat out we're writing again um so um, we've got some stuff back home, like a few a few bits and pieces, but the main focus now is getting the new project out, getting it to the world, and showcasing it, showcasing it for everybody. Yeah. So. Good. And one question I love to ask is, how did you guys get together? How did you form this band? And what was it that made you go, uh, I want to write music? Oh, this is a good one. So these two actually hated each other. Uh, they were in competition <laughs> in school. Do you still want to talk a wee bit about that? Yeah, we used to go to school together. We used to go to... Um, St Mary's College Day, <laughs> um, and uh, I we used to do what? Do you remember? Uh, we used to do some high school talent. No, uh, that was the first time I'd really seen yeah. you. Mm. I was a year ahead. Um, I was a year ahead of her, so whenever she came on, I was like sussing her because she was the only other person that would play uh, acoustic guitar and 
like gig outside of school and I was like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking on to you I'm fucking on to you like. and then I remember there was one time we were sitting we were playing uh, it was open day at school and Hannah broke her string in the other room and they fucking took my guitar off me to give the app back I know that's so, that's so sad <laughs> I didn't know this until later then whenever we formed the band and you were like do you remember that and I was like I have no recollection of that at all and then I was like looking at you because you, you go so hard on the I guitar do. that's I how do. you broke it and I saw you break that fucking string and I'm going to break it I'm watching you <laughs> I'm watching you I know. Uh, so I basically Nairi was a year ahead of me in school, and that's very important to know that you're the eldest as well. Why? And I'm so young and all. You're oh. The wisest. That's not fair. I'm so young I and all. Ha- I do have grey hair. So well. <laughs> but, uh, they, Don't we all? Don't we all? That's why this is on. But I, uh, them two basically just like you formed the band first. You didn't even play bass. No. But you were just like, I could play bass. <laughs> and then you no, you play bass. And then they came they came along maybe two years later and just picked me up off a street from all our bands and they were like, We're taking you with us. So <laughs> you're ours now. So I was in other bands and they were just like, Hmm, we like you. Yank. <laughs> so Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, basically they took me then, and now this is the final lineup since January 2019. Mm-hmm. And two weeks in, I had to play my first gig and learn all of the songs. So I had two weeks to learn everything. Yeah. Uh, but not just that. Alana's first gig, she had two weeks to go, and on that gig, we got offered one of the biggest festivals we ever have ever done, and that was all because Alana was there. Yeah. Was, she's our good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> Good, and there must be a bucket list of things that you want to kind of achieve as as a band. What what's the one thing that if you had to pick, what's the one thing that you would want to oh, achieve? We do one each. Uh, do you know what I was thinking today? Do you know, like despite it being really manic and really really horrible, I'd love to crowd surf. <laughs> I actually would love no. to crowd surf. I've, no, I've always wanted to. Do I it. have only crowd surfed once, and it was the worst experience of my life. See, I I, I find it really scary. Like, see, as a girl, like I always be well scared that somebody's gonna like grab me and all, and uh, like that's me. Eh? Go on. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you crowd surf during your own set, I I start I at the front and work backwards. I maybe I maybe they would be a wee bit more like respectful, but like I don't know. I also feel like I'm not the skinniest. They're going so like I would worry. <laughs> I would worry that I would crush people. But I would, al- I've always wanted to. Do you know, like Jack Black and School Rock is all I've always wanted to cross. And then he, he finally cross surfs at the end of School Rock. I feel like that's like, that's a that's a end goal. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do um, I think mine's well, mine's is not on personal, <laughs> personally. But I w- I would love to play Red and Leeds. I would just love to do it. I was that gonna be yours? <laughs> but I it is lo- now. <laughs> I, I like me and my auntie won VIP tickets to Reading and Leeds in 2018, and it was so amazing. Like yeah. the atmosphere there was great. We went to the Reading one, uh, but it would be amazing just to play Reading and Leeds. Like if even if we, hey BBC, um, <laughs> get us on a stage. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was like it was great. So I would love to do the actually play at it this yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Bynes would just be like to be able to do this like forever because like and like just keep getting doing what we're doing we're climbing the ladder and hopefully maybe one day we'll be in fucking Wembley Stadium yeah. fucking playing playing a set and yeah. everybody's all woo woo like pyramid stage at Glastonbury yeah, no seriously <laughs> if anybody's listening that wants to get us under Red and Leeds Glastonbury please <laughs> please, please, please. please, please, please. I'm sure it'll happen at some point well guys it's it's been a pleasure having a chat with you Thank you. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. Thanks very much. Cheers.